It was actually a game ball, which Jacobs made sure he made clear to her. But anyway, uh, he uh, gave her the ball, and she had it in the hospital until she was discharged. And she still has it on the mantle in her house. And the next week, uh, we went back to practice. And I sit, we always would sit down and do kind of a debriefing, for lack of a better term, with the kids. And I asked them on that Tuesday after that Sunday game, I said, what's the most important thing we did last week? And you got the typical answers from the kids. Oh, we hit well. Coach, we got all your signs. I was on both the signs. I didn't forget the signs. Maybe I was moving my hands too fast or whatever. But we got the signs. We played good defense. We hit well. They answered all the right questions. And I said, keep going. And they started to think a little bit. And then I took a, a baseball. And I put the baseball on the ground. And, well, we, we played good defense? Yeah, we did that too. Um, we worked up good. You know, they started. Then I took a pen out of the scorebook. And I put the pen next to the baseball. And one of the boys finally said, we signed that ball for Jake's grandma. And I said, that's what we did best. And the message that we had that day before practice was, unfortunately, many of you kids, in some way, shape, or form, may have to deal with cancer, whether it's you or a family member. Um, and it was probably, I don't know, two years later, we were still with the same team, the same group of kids. And one of the kids came up and thanked me for that. He said. And we were getting done with our travel team. They were moving on to high school. And he said, that's the thing I'll remember the most. So I think as coaches, we always have those opportunities to provide these kids with life lessons. What, they, what he remembered most about three years of playing baseball with me had nothing to do with baseball. So it was just a great example. Yeah, I'll be quite honest. As an athlete growing up and even through college, all I cared about was winning and when my next game was and being competitive. and. I grew up in a different time where social awareness and, and also in a very small community where I didn't really get outside of, of, of you know, my little farm community in Ohio. But um, you know, it, that, that's what it was about for me. And you know, you're talking about what was the biggest thing or biggest influence. And, and for me, it was when my own children were born. When, um, when you have your own kids and you're trying to figure out how not to screw them up and um, <laughs> You know, it it it, it, it kind of hits you. I mean, it, it just really, really hits you. And with me, you know, I fortunately it was young enough in my life. I was in my mid twenties, and I was just getting into coaching. But it was a process. I mean, it was really. But the light bulb that went on in my head was, yes, I'm still competitive. I still want to win. But the light bulb that went on in my head is like, um, and especially when my kids went off to school and you put them in somebody else's care, you're like, you want somebody to influence them and have the same care for them that you know they'll never care as much as, as I do about my own kids but it just the light bulb moment went off in my head is I've got somebody else's kids every single day in my gym I have someone else's kids in my gym now you're young adults at this point you're 18 19 20 but um, I really feel this is this is the time when the light bulb goes on or should should go on for a, a lot of kids you know you're being exposed to so many different things right now being in college, and that for me was when I had my own kids. Was just like you said, you know, you having that moment to teach them, you know, um, yeah, you still want to do your best when you're on the field, and you still want to, you know, to to be a great teammate and and, and represent the university. But there there's more to it, a lot more. No matter what you do, whether you're coaching, you're going to probably be a part of a team. Um, very few of you are probably going to be working in an isolated cubicle all by yourself, you know, for your whole entire life. You're probably going to be a part of a team or part of an organization that you're going to have those opportunities on a daily basis, if, again, if you're active and you look for them. Um, let me ask, I'll ask one more kind of final question and we'll start bringing in the uh, audience a bit. But, um, uh, I think I put on kind of prepping you a bit. There, I, in putting on this class and then and having my choosing you guys as panelists, I know that I'm going to have an overwhelming support for um, and love and passion for sports. But there are the other kind of I don't want to say half because it's, you know, it's not like people are necessarily arguing against them. But there's the, there are those who have the uh, there are those critics, those that are concerned about either. The, the veracity um, that people support or get behind sports or how enthusiastic or even nutballish <laughs> people will get behind sports. 
to those who say, yes, you're implementing great programs, but have you really thought them through, and are they really for the people that you're saying that you're trying to help? So let me ask this question, and I'll just open it up to anybody on the panel to, 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 to take this. But um, how, do you, how would you respond to someone who says, well, you're only in it really for you? Uh, for example, I'm going to pick on you, Chris. Um, you like football, so you're just using your program as a way to push what you like. You like football, you try to make other people like football too. So you just have that program so you can do what you like. Or Sarah, you like soccer, so you just made a program so people will pay you to do what you like to do. It's all about Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, look at, to all of you, how do you respond to that? I mean, you know, to, to someone who has that criticism? Well, I'll go. Jason. I, I, I think there's some validity there. You know, I, I think first of all, absolutely. Why do I do what I do? Because I love the sport of volleyball. And when I get engaged with uh, young men and women who are playing the sport, sure, I, I, I'm going to push that upon them, as, as I think you guys will, because you find the value in baseball, in, or in football, in baseball, in soccer. I, I, I think all of us have a passion for what we, what we have found um, has molded us uh, as individuals through sport. Um, I also think that part of the problem with athletics is that uh, we go back to a mass media a world we live in and it celebrates the negative unfortunately I think the news really lifts up all the negative that happens and we lose track of mm -hmm. I mean I didn't even know what you guys are doing in Grand Rapids and, and that's a shame that things like this take place that I in a, in a city I live in that I don't know anything about now I know the YMCA I know the Miracle uh, field because I've, I've heard a lot about it um, but but there are so many great programs that that do great things for young kids that we don't know enough about. Um, and it's because it's doing good things, so you don't always hear the good. Uh, I think we live, unfortunately, in the negative too, too often. Um, but I think there's some validity to all of us have our passions and we want to stay in those, and that's why we, uh, we coach, we teach, we, we want to interact with people that are trying to achieve what, what we think helped us get to where we did. I think it's important too to remember that sports are not the ends but the means. You know, for me it's baseball, for them it's volleyball, you know, these guys are into football. I'm not gonna get any major league baseball players that come through the Miracle League process. My goal is not to make them better baseball players. It's it's to make them better kids and better people and to give them the opportunity to develop everything that comes with sport um, for that end and not for the end of becoming a better baseball player. You know, to Andy's point. You know, they, they, give, they give the award not to the kid who had the highest average or had the most home runs, but the kid who had the best spirit and was the best teammate. And that's where I think sport, um, you know, is, is not the end goal, but it gives you the vehicle to develop life skills uh, and, and um, demonstrate that through something that's a lot of fun that a lot of people can relate to. But, you know, to answer your question, you know, the, the critics, if they want to look at this as a football program or a baseball program or a volleyball program, they're missing what we're saying. Because it's not about the sport, it's about the life lessons and the opportunities that we're giving these kids so that when they're young adults, you know, they call Chris and say, hey, I got a problem. And it's not football related, it's life related. But because of the experience that Chris has given them through football, um, they develop a relationship where they want to come back and, and, and get his advice. I want to have that same opportunity with kids who are going through Miracle League to play baseball. I don't care if they ever go to another baseball game in their lives, if they ever call me about a baseball question, but it'd be great to hear. You know what? I was able to go to, you know, I, I took on this new challenge. I was able to go to college and I've started my own Miracle League field. Things like that, I think, is where we need to focus on the ends and, and sport is just the means to get us there. Chad, as the critic, I never played soccer until I started with these folks several years ago. I played hockey for six years in Canada. So what I saw was uh, hockey without a stick. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> They've changed my attitude. <laughs> but working with, with the homeless, you're looking at like four things you try to think of. Uh, housing, uh, uh, daily meaningful activities, uh, positive contact with the mental health provider over time, and a stable, uh, stable sober uh, period. And so when they started talking about doing this, to me it was like, this is a natural. 
This is an ad. We've got these things we're trying to do with these folks on the streets. And this would be a natural mechanism to put that into place. Um, we don't have uh, uh, celebrity status, but uh, we've been in the county for several years, and we have credibility. So we go to the breakfast program for the homeless, the meals for the homeless, we go into the bridges, the woods, wherever. We have some credibility that says, hey, come out and play soccer. And like they said, I don't play soccer. So what? Come on out, hang with us, because every week we're out there. And these guys started this seven years ago. They started with two or three players. And now you've got 16 to 18 showing up because people know these guys will be there. And in the homeless community, you're dealing with people, obviously homeless, health abuse, mental health issues, and we've got folks coming from jails. Well, try to tell the jail guy, I'm going to be here for you when you pass me the ball. And they learn that. They learn the social skills that they can then take and apply every day. And you see them where they start to blow up on the court, and they start pulling it back down instead of going off. Because I'm on this, but wait a minute, you like that thing. And they start pulling back in, they start learning other social skills, they learn community. Uh, going to DC, they are just, they come back with their shirts, they wear them around. You go to the breakfast program, there's our team players, they got their shirts. <laughs> and it's like, they love it, and we love being part of that. So, uh, to the critic, I'd say Thursday morning, 7 o'clock, meet in my office, wear outdoor clothes, we're going for a walk, and then come at 10 30 to our practice. And just hang with us, see what we do, and then make your comments. Or give us some feedback. Yeah. Well, what we say to the critics, um, we, our head is to the ground, so we, we kind of just don't pay that any attention. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but we would say that sports is just a hook or a draw for us. Um, we're not putting, like, we're not pushing football on anybody. We're not pushing anything on anybody. We're more concerned with helping young people become like I said, civic leaders, responsible adults, and advanced learners. That, that's the ultimate goal. Um, through positive male role models or mo positive male figures that have the time, talent, energy to pour into the young people, um, that's our goal. Um, there, there's no huge money being made. Um, Carlton and I, we, we did a seven on seven, uh, it was called a travel team flag football league. And so we got we got players from all of West Michigan on one seven on seven team. And um, it, it's those type of moments where we're just using sports as a vehicle to do more, to be help them be more. And we go around and play where all we go, everywhere. everywhere. You know, and um, Pittsburgh, uh, finals in Dallas. Dallas. You know, uh, Chicago, you know, everywhere, Eastern Michigan had a tournament there. So. But like Tony alluded to, it, it, it's about those those intimate moments when the camera's not on, when, when none of that stuff is happening, when, when we're just talking man to man to a, to a young person. We live by the three C's, which is coach them, challenge them, and call them. We, we, we tell we're not interested in programs because we don't feel like, we believe that programs don't change people, but relationships do. And we're, we're so focused on making sure that we are a constant in young people's lives. Um, because there's so many other people that's not. They're, they have a father that's home, uh, people that's making empty promises to them. So we just try to be consistent in what we do and what we can provide. Um, and oftentimes, sports has nothing to do with it because their issues are so much bigger and larger.